the best way to check the value of models is to do a fingerprint test. Let me explain what that is. Every model make, predicts every model predicts warming. Every model predicts warming. They all predict warming. And they predict warming at different altitudes and different places. It's giving you a certain fingerprint, a pattern of warming, just like a pattern of your, on your fingerprint. Let me show you what this looks like. This is the pattern of warming taken from the IPCC report. I'll show you the details here. This is the equator. This is the North Pole. Whoops. Here's the South Pole. This is altitude, height. And you see that the rate of warming, this hot spot, the rate of warming is maximum at an altitude of about 10 kilometers in the tropical region. So that is the fingerprint of greenhouse warming. All greenhouse models predict that the climate should warm most at 10 kilometers in the tropical region. Okay, what do the observations show? No hot spot. In fact, the observations show a cold spot, a colder region here. So there's no increase in temperature trend with altitude. And the upshot is, just to give you the final result, the two fingerprints don't match. The models show one fingerprint, the observations show another fingerprint. They're completely different. In other words, this is one of our strongest arguments against any greenhouse effect causing warming at, in the, this century or the coming century. Okay, just to so you can see it again, this, these are the models. These are the observations. You can present it in a different way, and we've done this here in a publication. The models, as you see, show an increasing trend, increasing, maximizing at 10 kilometers. The observations show a decreasing trend. What do our opponents say when you present them these facts? These facts come from the IPCC. We have not changed them. But what do they say when we show them this comparison? Well, they say, maybe there's something wrong with the observations. So finally, the conclusions. The observations show no detectable human fingerprint which means that the models essentially overestimate the greenhouse effect. In other words, the models don't work. And their predictions are useless. It also shows that CO2 is not a pollutant. Therefore, mitigation of CO2 is pointless. It has no use, it's just expensive. We also say that sea level will continue to rise at its normal rate of 18 centimeters per century. It's been rising at this rate for a few thousand years now. It will continue to rise at this rate. And finally, we conclude that natural climate change is mostly the result of solar activity. Solar activity varies those of you who live in Scandinavia, particularly in the north, know about aurora. Have you seen the aurora? No use? Yeah. Yeah. This is a result of solar activity, and it varies. It's sometimes strong and sometimes weak. It shows an 11-year cycle, and so does the climate. The pioneer work on solar activity affecting the climate has been done right here in Copenhagen by Henrik Svensmark, who spoke at our conference 
uh, I guess a couple of days ago, whom I visited yesterday. He's the outstanding scientist in this field, and the IPCC doesn't even mention his work. They take no notice of him. So finally, let me talk a little bit about the IPCC and what has been going on in the last two weeks. Those of you who read the newspapers may have seen brief notices about something called Climate Gate. I have to step forward quickly because my time is almost up. Climate Gate. It turns out that a very few people who are scientists have been able to control the IPCC and the IPCC reports. Worse than that, they have been able to control the scientific literature and they have prevented dissenters or people who have different ideas from publishing their work. They've distorted the temperature record. They've dist I won't go into the details of how they've done this, but they've been hiding the, the raw data and algorithms. They've destroyed evidence. They've tried to, to evade the Freedom of Information Act. You may hear about this this afternoon from Lord Moncton because he's taken a strong view on this and has urged the British government to start an investigation to determine just how they have been able to evade the law, which is the Freedom of Information Act, how they've hidden their data, and how they've modified the results for the IPCC. They've misused the peer review process, they prevented publications of critiques, they've even pressured the editors of journals, and they've smeared their opponents. For example, I've been attacked as being in the pay of big oil or of representing the tobacco lobby or of advocating secondhand smoke and various things which are completely untrue. But they do this in order to damage the reputation of any scientist who opposes them. That's their technique. The major attack actually has come from a Canadian blog. And we're going to go after these people and sue them as soon as we have enough money to pay the lawyers. It's very expensive to, to sue uh, for libel. Let me quickly step through here. And finally finish off to show you what is in store for us in the coming Ice Age. Thank you very much.